cinema and live music gigs are fun alone not activities you would have a full on conversation anyway. One of the best nights of my life was at a Slipknot concert, and I was on my own. I will say going for a walk around the area, you might find other stuff that will spark your interest in life. I did this a lot when I was working in other countries where I basically don't know anyone. It's the closest I've ever gotten to experience what I would consider zen. After my divorce some years back I spent a lot of time alone. I really underestimated how great it was. I met a couple of short term interests by having a nice dinner alone. Go live your best life. What is a short term interest? Walking. Just walking. I look at things, enjoy the faces, get to know new areas. It's a great way to prevent depression from running up behind me, and I always feel good when I'm out. Late evening is my favorite time. People watching is so underrated. Walk out to a busy area and just sit on a bench watching everyone go about their daily lives. Movies. I have a house full of willing people, but I sneak out and go alone. During the day is best, you can sit by yourself where you can't hear anyone chew and fiddle. No one tries to whisper to you. You see exactly what you want. I love midweek, daytime, small town movies. First time I saw a movie alone I felt really weird, but now I don't even know why. You're alone in a dark room, why would you want someone else anyway? I love going to a nice restaurant alone. And yes, I've noticed that, in a good establishment, the staff are more attentive than they are, if you're with someone. I also like to go to a nice traditional pub for an afternoon and a couple of pints of really good craft beer. Sometimes I'll sit at the bar and chat with the bar staff or other customers. Sometimes I take a book and read. I also think art galleries and museums are best experienced alone. You can spend more time at the pieces that really interest you, and less at the ones which don't. As a server, I tend to check on my tables as often as possible, but if I see two or more people chatting it up, I'm going to check on them a little less, so I'm not interrupting. If I get a good vibe from someone sitting by themselves I might try and talk with them a little more, see how they're doing, what their plans are for today, etc. I don't think it's about attentiveness, but more so not pissing people off who are trying to have a convo and feel like their server is butting in too frequently. Photography. I always do it alone. Same here, especially nature slash birds. But I will say as an adult man, do not take pictures of people, and if kids are nearby the lens cap goes back on. Not worth it to even be accused of something dumb. But I have met plenty of other birders and nature photographers at parks and on the trail, and they often share tips for good locations. Shopping. Whenever I'm in the supermarket, I like to zigzag through all the aisles and just see everything. I can appreciate how others may dislike this, so this is why I prefer to do this alone. I'm good at this in the summer for the few days it is really hot in the PNW. Eating alone is 100% normal. Anyone who lives in a bigger city does this all the time. No one cares. You do you. Eating alone is normal for sure, but I do care about anyone who living in a big city does it all the time, at least not in my big city. Any. Cooking, cleaning, reading, biking, hobby of any kind etc. I find them all much more enjoyable alone, because I can concentrate on what I'm doing. Same. I'll never understand how some people will do everything together. It also just sounds exhausting. How do you never run out of things to talk about? I go out alone all the time, eating slash drinking slash seeing live music etc. I think it is all about your mindset while doing it. If you're open to having convos with strangers slash chatting it can be great. I have found a few good pubs where the environment is friendly and I can meet slash make friends it's actually kind of nice after a while. No one except you cares if you're dining alone. However I will say, if it bothers you, or if you'd simply like a little company sit and eat at the bar, there are always solo folks there plus you can chat with the bartender. This, it took me longer than I'd like to admit in my adult life to realize it's okay to eat at the bar and not order anything to drink besides water. At some point in life, all your friends get swept up in jobs, family, relationships, commitment. 
It's better to do things alone because, wherever you go, whatever you're doing, there are gonna be other people doing it as well, and it's easy to make new friends when you instantly have that in common. Don't let old friends hold you back. Yeah, I went through a divorce a few years ago, now I'm 42. All of my friends are married with kids. I've made some new friends, but man it sucks that I can't see my old buddies more than 1-2 to times a year. When I have my alone time, I will go walk around the downtown area of my city. Enjoy the views and the little shops. Sit on a bench. People watch. Enjoy the sounds and buildings, etc. Also, a good hike helps me to enjoy the beauty of mother nature and the solitude that's around me. Traveling, I normally end up meeting people on the way, but I start alone just doing what I want. When you meet people traveling, is it like at a restaurant or a bus? How do you go about actively meeting people on the way? Brewing beer slash wine, gardening, making music, working on motorcycles, third printing, cooking, basically anything constructive where I can sit back after and pat myself on the back lol, going to park with the doggos. I have a so, but I still like alone time. The best beer I ever had was one I brewed myself. It was a porter with jalapeno in it. MMMM. I travel for work. I'm in a new city almost every week and 8 out of 10 times that I travel, I'm alone. I have come to realize that being comfortable being alone and not needing to appear that you are with someone is a strength many people do not possess. People will judge you for literally everything. Most of the time it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. If they believe what you are doing is weird, it's more of a reflection of themselves than you. All you truly have in this world is yourself. Make yourself happy first. Learn to enjoy solitude and you will rarely be lonely. Cooking is a great hobby to have. It can take all day or just a couple minutes. You can pour your soul into a dish or throw something together. You can cook to reward yourself or make something to share with others. It's a great way to explore your own tastes and personality or to explore a new culture. Cooking is an important life skill, and since eating is necessary it's easy to spend money on without feeling bad. Plus, whenever you're ready to get back into the dating game girls love a guy who can cook. I know that you're right but I just hate cooking. I suck at it so, even when I do it, it's not worth the time and effort. AHH Master Dating. After a while it's less weird doing things alone. Try the movies next. I've been a long time solo theater guy, I love doing that, but there isn't any attention on me, so it doesn't feel nearly as weird as most things. Running. Sport climbing club. Hiking, particularly in the woods. Love the connection with nature and always feel better after a trek through the woods. Just moved to Arizona and been hiking a lot on my own. I pretty much do everything alone. My favorite things are camping, fishing, going to the movies slash dinner, and celebrating my achievements. They are enjoyable specifically because they are done alone. No one to worry about if they are having a good time or trying to make sure you pick a place to eat that everyone will be able to find something backslash. I know a lot of picky readers not diet limited eaters backslash. And finally, at the end of the day, I managed to do more with less time wasted, because we all know that no two people are ever ready to go at the same time. Smoking a blunt and playing PC games. This is a must for me at least once a month. <laughs> my man. I love walking or biking around my city, just noticing things and people. If it's a nice day I get to enjoy and notice that too. Beach fishing. Dude yes. Some of the most content folks I've ever seen are the dudes who wake up early to go fishing in the surf. Nothing quite like it. I'm sorry you got dumped on your birthday. Man, she wasn't the one s asterisk 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 happens. That's the way I look at it. Masturbating, always awkward in a group. Depends. It's like applause. I start and hope everybody joins. I've lived my life mostly alone by preference. I always found comfort in simple things. The hot tea in a cafe, sitting by a large window, and watching life outside pass by. Walking through quiet parks, admiring the sun passing through the tree leaves, or the breeze making ripples on the ponds. 
I like to walk by fancy buildings or old mansions, observing the architectural details, the ironwork, the paint jobs, the stained glass. When in New York City, I really liked my time at Coney Island, standing on the pier to stare into the horizon over the Atlantic Ocean, wondering about the rest of the world and how things are going on out there that I'll never know about. There was always a whole planet living daily life beyond those waves. You can find a thousand ways to deeply appreciate the solitary life. There's clarity and peace outside the noise of a chatty companion or lover. Playing the piano. You can always duet with the soprano.